All right, uh, good morning or evening, afternoon, uh, everyone who is attending our workshop today. Um, my name is Casey Adderhold. I work at IRIS and I will be helping out um, in the logistics of running this meeting. If there are any questions, uh, you can direct me, uh, direct those to me. Um, right now, we'll just go ahead and uh, get started with a uh, introduction from um, uh, Herb Wang, uh, who has been oops, working on oops, organizing uh, this workshop, but also the larger uh, DAS RCN. Um, so, Herb. Thank you, Casey. Yeah, so I'm really happy to welcome everybody to our first workshop. Uh, which is part of a research coordination network on DAS. Uh, this officially began on June 1st, and so we're pretty pleased to be able to offer this uh, virtual workshop uh, so soon afterwards. Uh, and originally, the idea was to have an in-person workshop at the annual Sage Gage uh, meeting, uh, followed in the fall by some tutorials but uh, we've rolled it into uh, three half days, uh, beginning today, uh, the Wednesday and next Monday. Uh, and I believe that this format is providing us a, a larger opening venue than we might have had uh, with an in-person meeting. Let me just tell you a little bit about the research coordination network uh, that uh, has begun. Uh, so we have uh, myself, uh, Bob Woodward at IRIS, Scott Tyler at CTEMPS, and Bob Detrick at IRIS as the principal investigators. And Casey, whom you've already met, is our project coordinator from IRIS, and I can't thank her enough for all the work that she's done to uh, keeping our steering committee together, as well as uh, uh, doing the logistics for this workshop. We do have a steering committee that meets monthly on uh, Thursdays at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. And so if you have items that you think uh, you would like to see the DAS RCN, uh, please uh, inform me, one of the PIs, or later we'll, uh, if you go to the website, you can see who all the members of the steering committee are. So, our activities are to provide uh, workshops, such as what you're participating in now, as well as uh, producing kind of issues uh, documents uh, from working groups that are specific to different uh, DAS uh, sub-activities. And so uh, if you go to our uh, DAS RCN website at IRIS, there would be a list of the working groups and I'll encourage you to participate in one of the existing ones and or uh, to make suggestions for additional ones. Of course, if you make a suggestion, you'll probably end up uh, being uh, the leader for it. Uh, we do have a mailing list that we call the DAS Interest Group or DIG. Uh, we did not automatically subscribe you uh, as a workshop participant, so uh, if you would like to stay informed of the RCN activities, please do uh, join that mailing list. So our goals are to advance the applications of DAS in geoscience and engineering, and to bring together uh, the international DAS community of research organizations, industry, technology companies who are providing uh, DAS for our applications and uh, government agencies. And so uh, a word from our sponsor, uh, NSF, uh, has this uh, wonderful RCN uh, program and ours is being managed by Eva Zanzerkia in the geophysics program in the Division of Earth Sciences. And she's gotten contributions from many uh, of the programs in EAR as well as in the Geo Directorate. And as this uh, RCN proceeds, we really want to encourage people from disciplines outside of seismology, but who see applications such as in the hydrologic sciences, uh, in instrumentation and facilities, in the cryosphere, Antarctic Earth Sciences, Antarctic Glaciology, Arctic System Science, and geomorphology and land use dynamics, 
uh, are all programs who are helping co-sponsor the activities of the RCN. So uh, please stay connected with us through our mailing list and by checking our website. And as the working groups produce their uh, issues reports, uh, there will be additional ways to uh, broaden uh, and synergize all of the DAS activities which are taking place. So thank you again for participating uh, in day one of this workshop. And uh, let me return uh, back to Casey to tell you about some of the logistics for uh, the operation of this workshop. Thanks, Herb. Um, well, as you know, the virtual environment is where we're at now, and um, things are a bit different than an in-person meeting, but we're happy that you've all uh, made it in. There's a few people that are not quite in yet, so we're going to work on that. But um, we ask that you uh, continue to be very patient with us as we learn the system. Um, if you do have any difficulties or any questions along the way, um, you can get in touch with us uh, easily by emailing dasworkshop at iris.edu. Um, that will go to the organizers and somebody will follow up with you as soon as we can. Um, there's also going to be um, some folks over in the Slack channel that you can join. Um, and so if there's other questions too, you can address them there. I'd like to direct you to our uh, code of conduct for this meeting, which will be um, enabled even though we are meeting virtually. Um, you can go ahead and uh, see that at the um, web address there. Um, it's also available, that link is available on the DAS, RC, our DAS workshop uh, website. Uh, for more information about the DAS RCN, as Herb, Herb had said, uh, that you can go to our website there. And I've already typed in the uh, link to join the mailing list there. All right, with that said, I will now um, pass this over to Eileen Martin, who is um, one of the lead organizers for this workshop and tutorial uh, to go over the goals for this and our future events. Thanks, Casey. I'm glad to be joining you all today. Um, when we started thinking about what should this workshop be like, um, a lot of the goals aligned well with the DAS Research Coordination Network, and in particular, trying to build an interdisciplinary community of DAS researchers. So when I say interdisciplinary, uh, like Herb was pointing out, there's people working in hydrology, in cryosphere, in seismology, like you might expect. Um, but there's also a lot of people like me working in computational science or people who are working in a variety of marine geophysics problems like Nate, for instance. Um, and we really need all of these different fields to work together uh, to build the tools that enable us to take advantage of really dense large scale data uh, that we can get with DAS. Um, this is of course really hard to do in an online format. So we've tried to do things like Casey mentioned, like the Slack channel to get you to interact with each other, start building up your network. Um, we want you to be able to find out about recent research and about future opportunities. There's a ton of uncharted territory in DAS and how it can be applied and the methods development to really be able to pin down uh, the applications that we need to be able to understand. We also wanted to be able to connect new DAS users and participants to more experienced researchers that are currently working in DAS. So, some workshops focus more on people who are already really experts in DAS, but we've specifically designed this one to make sure that it's accessible to people who maybe just know what DAS vaguely is. It's something with a fiber optic that measures strain or, or vibrations. Um, so we hope to make this really accessible to you all. Uh, and as you're participating, especially on the Slack channel and asking questions, Keep in mind, there's no stupid questions. We're really trying to do this to help you all um, get involved in DAS and to learn about DAS. Um, one of the other things that we wanted to do was help participants discover public data that's been acquired with DAS. There are a few of these data sets. We're gonna dig into two of them on day two, the FORGE data and the Brady Hot Springs data. Um, and so this way you have some tools um, to be able to actually start working with DAS data even before you acquire it. 
We also want you to learn some fundamental concepts of DAS technology. How do the interrogators work? What are they really measuring? And how do we quantify that when we're actually processing these data? You'll see this a little bit in the Jupyter notebooks that we're going to go over on day two, and even more in depth on day three um, when we're doing more in-depth data processing. On day two, you're going to get basically a starter pack of computational tools to start sort of small to medium scale analysis of DAS data. So we're really going to get our hands dirty with this. Hopefully, it's enough of a jumping off point that over time, if you want to dive deeper into those data sets or other large scale public DAS data sets, this will give you the tools to get started and keep running more on your own working together. And we really want to have you use this as an opportunity to start working together with other participants to dive deeper into these analyses. So we're going to post some questions, especially on day two, for you to be working with other participants. So take advantage of that Slack channel. We'll also do some breakout groups for you to work together. Um, and we hope that in that way, you'll be able to um, start forming your own collaborations and connect to people who are already experts. So going back to this idea of connecting participants to people who are experts in the field, we've recruited 11 workshop guides. So Casey, will you go to the next slide? Thanks. So here are our 11 guides. Um, all of these people have been working with distributed acoustic sensing technology for a variety of purposes. So um, Julia Correa at Berkeley Lab, uh, Ariel Lelouch at Stanford University, uh, is a postdoc there. Um, oh, and Julia Correa is a research scientist at Berkeley Lab. Uh, Gang Fang, who's a postdoc at National University of Singapore. Junju Shen, who's a PhD student at Penn State. Yumin Zhao, who's a PhD student at National University of Singapore. Ethan Williams, who's a PhD student at Caltech. Alexi Titov, who's a PhD student at Colorado School of Mines. Zefeng Li, who's a, who's a postdoc at Caltech. Ben Lo, who's a postdoc at Colorado School of Mines. Veronica rodriguez Tribalos, who's a research scientist at Lawrence Berkeley Lab. And Siwon Yuan, who's a PhD student at Stanford. And one thing that you might notice is these are all early career researchers. Um, and an overall trend in DAS technology, because it's this new and emerging field, is that a lot of the people who are experts on this are very early in their careers. So, uh, we wanted to make sure to sort of feature those early career researchers as well as some more experienced researchers who you'll hear give talks today. Um, so I'd encourage you to go over to the Slack channel. There's a link in the chat right now if you haven't joined yet so that you can start to interact with these guides. They'll be on there. They'll be there to answer your questions um, and to help you out as you encounter challenges with uh, working with the DAS data or if you have questions just more generally about the talks that you want to discuss. So um, with that, uh, I will pass this over to um, Dante Frada. So uh, our moderators today are going to be Dante Frada and Scott Tyler. So Dante is an associate professor in the Department of Geological Engineering and in Civil and Environmental Engineering at University of Wisconsin-Madison. And Scott Tyler is a professor in the Department of Geological Sciences and Engineering and he's the Director of Hydrological Sciences at the University of Nevada, Reno. So uh, I'll turn it over to Dante. Thank you, Irene. Uh, uh, Casey, would you mind if you put, put the, the agenda for the today's meeting? So Eileen uh, and uh, Nate Lindsay are in charge, are going to be the organizers of the two uh, the second and third day of this workshop. Uh, Scott Tyler at University of Nevada, Reno, myself at University of Wisconsin-Madison, we are in charge of organizing the invited lectures today. As uh, so Herbert mentioned and also Eileen indicated, there are a great number of challenges and opportunities of using DAS. So we will, in these presentations, we would like to give you an overview of those uh, pot the potential challenges based on the many opportunities that we have. So we invited four different lecturers that they have worked uh, not only with us, but in other technologies that they can help us advance that technology in, in engineering and research. So those are Charlotte uh, Roshek, uh, um, Richard Allen, um, 
Tirian Bergen and uh, Professor Herwan. So they are going to give us a different, different type of applications and overview. There are going to be two of the presentations that are going to be directly related to, uh, to DAS, and that will be uh, uh, Charlotte uh, Kroshek and Professor Herwan, that they are going to be talking about applications of DAS on different research. In particular, Professor Herwan will be talking about um, some of the date, data that we have collected at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and those are some of the data available for public use. And that will be a segue for the workshop that we are going to have next Wednesday and the following Monday. Uh, then we are going to have uh, the Professor Richard Allen. Professor Richard Allen has been working on early warning system and an opportunity to be able to use uh, the, another type of network that, as, such as DAS to be able to complement some of his work. And finally, uh, Kay Ann Bergen will be working and uh, presenting big, uh, issues related to big data analysis. So one of the challenges that we have with us is that we have collect large data sets and we have to find ways to be able to rapidly identify the characteristics and the opportunity. So uh, those, are, those are the, we have very excited about these four presentations. We are going to have, uh, these presentations are going to be about 20 minutes long and we are going to have a great uh, uh, 20 minutes to be able to ask questions. So please don't be shy. We understand that we have uh, 400 uh, reg registered for this workshop. So we are hopefully we are going to have many questions and many interactions with the presenters. So with that, uh, Scott, do you want to add anything else? Before I move on and start presenting. There we go, coming. Um, just a reminder, um, you, there is a question and answer channel. Thank you, Dante. And also, I just want to offer my thanks to the organizers, Eileen, uh, Nate, and Casey, who've done a stupendous job uh, organizing this. But again, type your questions into the question and answer box, and then uh, we will try to sort through those after the pre each presentation. Thank you. So thank you very much, Scott. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the organizers. At, uh, uh, Casey, Eileen, and Nate have done an incredible job putting this together.